In this video, I want to talk about how once we've assembled all of our data into a statistical software package, we can then go ahead and start to build econometric models of situations. And the particular process which I'm going to advocate to do this is known as general to specific modeling, which is often credited with David Hendry. In order to illustrate the benefit of this particular process, I first of all want to talk about the sort of opposite of this process, which we could call specific to general modeling. And sometimes it's known as forward stepwise regression. So the idea here is that we start off with a relatively simple model of the economic situation. So we have that wage is equal to, let's say, a constant alpha plus some error term epsilon. And the idea here is that the error term epsilon captures all of those other effects which, or all those other variables which affect wage and cause it to be different from its mean. Then what we might do is we might add in a next variable. So we start off by adding in, let's say, an individual's level of education. And then we just have our error term epsilon. And if this model seems to sort of represent the underlying economics of the situation in that beta 1 would be greater than 0, and perhaps if beta 1 is also statistically significant, we would then sort of stick with that model and we'd add in further variables. So we might then add in an individual's level of experience. So we have wages equal to alpha plus beta 1 times education plus beta 2 times an individual's experience plus some error term epsilon. And the idea is that we continue adding in these extra variables and checking that the model remains sort of congruent with reality and also checking that the variables when we add them in are actually statistically significant and then we arrive at a sort of finalised model. So the idea is that you start off very specific and you work out to a more general model. So you can sort of think about this as sort of an upside down, uh, well, a triangle whereby the pointy end at the top represents the start of the process and the sort of wider base at the bottom represents the end of the process. So the idea is that we are increasing the general generality of our model until we get to a model which is relatively general and represents sort of relative economic sense. So what are the reasons for not using this particular modeling technique? Well, the main reason is what we have called in the previous videos, omitted variable bias. The idea being that essentially this top model here is very much sort of not a very good model because of the fact that it doesn't contain all of the important variables which we think influence an individual's wage. Similarly, this next model here, which just has in it education, is pretty much going to be lacking a lot of other important covariates, perhaps an individual's experience, perhaps a parental income or parental education, which themselves might be correlated with an individual's level of education. Hence, we know when we have important omitted variables which are correlated with independent variables in the regression, that means that the estimates which we get from our econometric model are going to be biased. So what does this mean? Well, it means that perhaps the value of beta 1, which we actually get in this regression here, is going to be biased. And it might be biased such that it actually turns out that in this model, the effect of education isn't important. So we might falsely remove education from this regression because we got this bias downwards estimates of education. On the flip side, what we might do is if we kept education in, then we added an individual's level of experience. If there are other important covariants which we think correlate with experience, then it might actually be the case that we falsely keep in an individual's level of experience, even though it's actually not statistically significant, because of beta 2 actually being inflated due to the presence of these omitted variables. So I hope you can see that this particular methodology actually leaves itself open to the issue of omitted variable bias. And it can, it can cause you to go down a route which actually doesn't represent the underlying economics of the situation, but more reflects the fact that your model actually doesn't contain important covariates, which you actually should be including. So the process which I'm going to advocate the use of is what is known as general to specific modeling. And the idea, if you can't guess it, is you start off with a model which is very general and you work down until you get to a model which is relatively specific. So what do I mean by a general model? So the model which we might start off with here might be an individual's wage is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times an individual's level of education plus beta 2 times an individual's level of experience perhaps plus beta 3 times parental income and 
perhaps other measures of parental education. And then finally, we have our error term epsilon. So we start off with a model which looks something like this. And the idea is that this general model contains all of the variables which we think are important in the underlying economics of the situation and also the sort of signs and magnitudes of the effect of these variables also make some sort of economic sense. So the idea here is that you wouldn't necessarily want the effect of education to be negative. So you wouldn't want beta 1 to be negative because the underlying economics suggests that beta 1 should be positive. So the idea is that we start off with a model which contains all the important variables which we think are important for the modelling and also is congruent with reality. Then what we do is we iteratively delete variables one at a time from this model in accordance with their level of statistical significance. So perhaps what we might do is we might find that parental income is not important in determining an individual's wage where in that the effect of this variable is actually statistically insignificant. So then what we do is we come up with a model which is wage is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times education plus beta 2 times experience plus a list of other variables which doesn't include parental education or parental income rather um, plus finally the error term epsilon. So the idea is that all we've done to go from this top specification to this one below it is we have deleted parental income. Then what we do is before proceeding on and deleting further variables iteratively we check that this model actually makes sense economically. So we check again that the signs and sort of magnitudes of the effects of each of these variables make sense. And only then do we iteratively delete another variable if it is not statistically significant. And the idea is that we continue doing this until we arrive at a model which is relatively specific and yet actually does represent the underlying economics of the situation. One question you can ask with this process is how do we iteratively delete variables if there are a number of variables which are statistically insignificant? Well, there's no hard and fast rule, but perhaps the best thing to do would be to delete those variables which are the most statistically insignificant as indicated by p-values. So why is the general to specific approach better than the specific to general approach? Well, the idea is that by starting off with a model which contains all of the important covariates, you don't leave yourself open to omitted variable bias, to the same extent at least as you do when you start off with a very specific model. And so when you actually delete variables from the regression, you might be able to do so with a little bit more confidence than you would have done in the specific to general case, where you weren't sure whether you were deleting or adding variables in, in accordance with actually their true relationship with wage in this case, and you actually are doing it because of the fact that there is or there are important omitted variables. So the general to specific case actually is a way of avoiding omitted variable bias. One thing I should add is that the process is never as sort of clean as I've indicated here in the general to specific case. The idea is that this process of going from a general model to a very specific one is kind of a process which should guide your creation of an econometric model over time. That doesn't mean between individual steps that you necessarily get slightly more specific because the idea is that you might actually end up with a model after you've deleted a variable which perhaps wasn't statistically significant which doesn't now make economic sense so perhaps you then need to go back up one. So the idea is that the process isn't quite as clean as I've indicated it here but there is some overall tendency over time to make the model more specific, more specific, starting off with a model which is more general.